Okay. And then Kyle, you're gonna double check that you've got sound back there. Running a driver's ed program is your passion. We're here today to see how driver's ed solutions can make that passion even better. Imagine how much simpler your life would be if you didn't have to schedule, cancel, reschedule drive times, send reminders, take payments, and find students to fill open drive times. Let your website automate these tasks and many more. Parents and students will love selecting drive times. Instructors will love managing their schedules. And you, because you've eliminated the busy work, you'll love spending more time on the important things. We take security very seriously when it comes to your data. Therefore, we securely process registrations and set up credit card processing if needed, all through a PCI compliant gateway. Our preferred provider is Shift4, one of the largest credit card processors in the U.S. and chosen for its excellent pricing structure and outstanding customer service. When we recommend a merchant account to process credit cards, it provides us no economic gain. Therefore, you know our choice has your best interest at heart and not our bottom line. Your students will have their own login to schedule, cancel, put themselves on a wait list, make payments, and view their history. A student will never be allowed to sign up for more drive times than they purchased or register for a course before they're of age. So many settings in the software are customizable by you. Let the software assess late cancellation fees or charge no-show fees. Instructors have their own login and can perform several functions such as setting their drive times, scheduling available students, seeing who may be on the wait list, reviewing a student's history, and taking attendance. When you take attendance, it's great to leave feedback for the student and parent for them to see while leaving private notes just for you or your staff. Administrators oversee all aspects of the software from creating courses, drive periods, taking payments, editing the website content, and package pricing. A variety of reports allows you to keep track of student registrations, balances, progress, instructor schedule, and much more. Driver's Ed Solutions will fully train you to make the most of our scheduling software. All training is included. Our streamlined process can have you up and running in about two weeks. We do our best to keep your project in forward motion, but realize delays in the timeline are dependent upon your availability for training. We'll acquire a domain on your behalf, which your school owns, or you can have your IT department create a link from your school website directly to the registration page. The advantage of having a freestanding website for your driver's ed department is being able to see this website display on the first page of search engines. This makes it easier for parents who are searching for how to start their child in your program. Scheduling is a breeze when you're working with driver's ed solutions. Support is always available through phone, email, text, or schedule a go-to meeting with our staff. Join the many satisfied customers who tell us how we bring value to their daily routine and wouldn't know what to do without us. We are also thrilled to be the only driving school scheduling software approved as a preferred provider by AAA and awarded a contract to provide our services to your driver ed program in the great state of Utah. Our corporate headquarters is located in Altoona, Wisconsin, where every line of code is written by our developers and never outsourced. We even maintain our own hosting facilities. We believe once you see the software in action, you'll be ready to get rolling and complete your sign up today. We made it through the whole thing this time. Awesome. All right. So that was just a basic overview to make sure that you kind of understood what we are attempting to do here. So how many of you have scheduling issues or what's your biggest challenge when it comes to driver's ed? I know for us, I mean, we schedule it like, there's three, there's two of us drivers and I give them 12 names to drive me because you know, I have 12 names. Mm -hmm. And our biggest thing is like when a kid cancels, and then I'll say, oh, crap, I wish I had someone there and different things like that. So sometimes I wish it was easier where you know, we could have it. Boom, boom, boom. So I don't know. Yeah. That's our biggest issue. Okay. Cancellations. Let me get to my other pages. You didn't close any of my windows down when you no. brought this in, did you? Okay. Just want to make sure. All right. So. <clears throat> You know, we're we're working with Summit um, High School School District right now, and I haven't even had the opportunity to meet with Ryan because they signed up just before Easter, right? So what they decided to do was do a freestanding website. So we acquired the domain, and then we put in all the content. Takes us a couple weeks, and then that allows um, their parents for that school district to register. 
for anything that, you know, that they're offering in the driver's ed program. So they'll come to the registration page. So the parent and child are getting into the system. They're signing up for whatever services that you are going to provide to them. And if they sign up for a package that has six hours of behind the wheel, then this student is never going to be able to sign up for more than six hours of behind the wheel. Um, it's going to keep track of that. So when we go into the back end, I can kind of show you how that all goes. They, um, this is a particular package that I just kind of pretend created because we haven't met to train yet that consists of behind the wheel, a road test, and then a self-paced online course. Um, it's kind of nice to be able to get the parents, get their information in there because then once they log in and like the, the video showed, if you take attendance and you leave some feedback for the parents, they can log in and see all that information. So our goal is to have you put your schedules in and then have the students chase down when you're available. So it's kind of shifting the paradigm of these are when I can work. And then you know when you have football and dance and whatnot. So this is where we want you to come in and look at my schedule to see when I'm available. So some of the things that um, I need my reading glasses, hold on. I can, and when I see you now, you're all blurry, but I'd rather see the screen than <laughs> make you blurry. I'm sure I am a little blurry right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Blurry. Okay. So we got a few more joining us. Good. All right. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to go into the back end. Um, was I in Safari on those pages? Since I'm at school districts. I lost my browser. All right. All right. So before I do that, one thing that in case you know everybody starts losing their attention towards the end, because we are approved, you know, through the school district, when you are thinking about actually working with us and you see how awesome this is, you can go to our website and all of you should have like a notepad or a pen that has our URL on it. And then when you click that link that says for Utah schools, typically what's gonna happen, you're gonna to have to submit a PO, all right? So I just wanted to run that by you. When you click that link, if you have to submit a PO to your department, you can fill all this information out and it will generate the PO for you. So then you can take it and move on to that next step, just in case you have to do that. Um, but I'm going to go into the back end now and find South Summit. And back and forth between the two. All right. Now, usually what people really like about the fact is that you get to put, I'm working on it. I know, but when I maximize it, I see I'm just learning to use my Mac now because I've been like Windows person for like 25 years. And I feel absolutely <laughs> stupid when it comes to the computer. And I've been on, on, on the computer forever. Okay, so anyways, there we go. So I'm not going to maximize it because I don't like it when it does that. It just causes grief and trying to find windows behind me. So this would be your admin center. And all of your students, once they have registered for a particular service that they are going to do, are going to be in the software. So you'll be able to go into manage students and see all of the students that are there. Now, I prefix them with different initials just so that I can show you, okay, here's someone who has maxed out the available drives that they can have. And what that means is if you are really booked and you want those kids and they're supposed to take six one hour drives and you wanna kind of slow roll their education, you can specify in the course that they can only grab three drives at a time. So for instance, Jarvis, if he, when we become this student, so this is what the student center looks like. All the students will have a place to log into and see exactly what they have to do. We know that this student is signing up for six hours behind the wheel and it has to do six hours of observation. He's only completed two hours because the instructor has taken attendance, which is good. He sees that he's got a couple of drives here. Now I was messing around when I think I was talking to you and I double booked the kid as an admin because normally the student wouldn't have two, two drives back to back, but we were talking. But if we wanted to, if this student had logged in and wanted to cancel, today is the 25th and there is a 24 hour late cancellation policy. So that means he should have canceled that by 1 p.m. today 
And if he says yes, delete it, it's going to add $35, no show fee, late cancellation fee to his account. Now I know you guys probably don't deal with no show fees, but wouldn't it be nice if the student had to be a little more accountable and there was something involved, like maybe having to spend money if they didn't show up for a drive we time? We tell them if they don't show up, they miss a drive and they don't let us know, they have to be rescheduled on 65 bucks. Ooh. So we do, we have to reschedule them. Yeah. And you know that if in, in this software, in this software, if they were to get a no show fee, a late cancellation fee, you can force it so that they can't schedule another drive until they pay. Okay, so that that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, and most driving schools across the U.S. charge a no show fee. Yours is unique because you're still doing driver's ed in the school system, which isn't the norm out there. So you know. Kudos to the kids and who get it still in the school district. Um, but that is one way of trying to help kids to show up. You know, if it hurts their pocketbook or mom and dad's pocketbook, and 65 is good. I mean, if you make it too low, 20 bucks, unfortunately, nowadays doesn't seem to really hurt the student. You know, um, some it does, some it doesn't. Um, but that student will always. Um, they'll be able to pay that fee online if you were to integrate credit card processing. Now, the credit card merchant account belongs to the school district. It's not us, it's not our, our merchant account. It would be the school district that applies for it and puts it in the bank account of their choice or the, the districts. Um, and then the funds are paid. What, I just lost my train of thought there for a second. Hmm, it's late. But um, it would be really nice if, if you consider that. But again, you know, setting up a merchant account with the school districts is not impossible, but is something that their your finance departments probably want to going to want to talk about. All right. Now the other students that we have in here, um, you can prevent them from scheduling by requiring practice days in between. So for instance, if I become this particular student, I believe I have set up a scenario where they have to have so many practice days in between. And that's when you're super busy and you've got a lot of kids that you're trying to crank through. Um, I can say like, she's already got a drive on the 25th or today's the 25th. It says, you must have two practice days in between because she's already got a drive on the 26th. But if she's trying to book on the 28th, she can't, has to have two practice days. But here's a scenario where, hey, this one is full but I'd really like that one if it becomes available. So they can put themselves on a wait list. And if Felix or Olivia cancel, they will be, anybody on the wait list will be notified that that drive opened up. And it's a first come first serve basis, but at least they get a chance for it. So we only notify the people on the wait list, not your entire behind the wheel students. Because we don't believe in bombarding people with notifications that they don't want. Um, so let's see. I'm going to go back to my managed students. Can I answer your so, question yes. about the finance? So mm -hmm. can it somehow be integrated with the school's finance? So when a kid pays a fee, it's integrated with the schools, so it will show up there? Or do they have to go in and manually transfer from one to the other? I think they, this would be a manual transfer because this software has an API that's written with a particular gateway. You're more geeky on that subject. Do you want to answer that? But the school district would control the merchant account, right? Okay. So it's going to go into their banking account. And what they do with it when it arrives in their banking account, we have no control over. Right. Which is good. It's good for you and it's good for us that we can't touch that money. So it sounds like it is leaked. And we can code it if we, we can we can attach a tag to it that will allow them to sort it easier and put it in the right spots. But we can't physically move it for them. Is there a history on here where you can see what fees have been paid? So you yeah. can go and set up a window of time and know that this thousand dollars in fees yes. matches these students. Yep. Um, if yeah. and then what about fee waiver type situation? And I can, so are you talking about those that are like free lunch or something like that? Yep, you can absolutely. So when we were working with Twilla, they didn't charge anything for behind the wheel. So are you saying that, and, and Summit, South Summit does, there was a $200 fee for driver's ed. So- We charge 85. Okay. And then you would have a fee or you would have a waiver for those people. You can set up coupon codes in here. So if your students that have reduced lunches- or fee waivers, yeah. Yeah. 
they could come in and they could register in whatever coupon code you give them that you know how many of you ever want to collect payments for everybody that's paying? Yeah. I still think well, you would want people to come okay. in office. That's right. So that's that's actually what I'm asking. If Kate pays to our sector in the office. Yep. I mean, could she go back into the, the yeah. system and market there? Yep, she could. Because if I go to yeah. the managed student section and let's say that that student went into the school office and this person owes a $35 fee, they could log in here. All they have to do is click the ledger and then they can um, log the payment, you know, and if you have if you want to tag it like you can create tags for reduced lunch students or South Summit, maybe your different school districts, I don't know if you have more than one high school within it, but yes, that person can manually log the payment. Um, you don't have to have credit card processing. It just makes it easier because if a parent ha does have a no-show fee or a late fee and it's 10 o'clock at night, they might want to pay it and get it over with so that they can schedule. But somebody would have to go in and, and say that they paid in the system. If yeah, you did like, not. But, but does that... That's the same we have to do. It's the same what you have to do right now. I know. So if they paid it in the office, isn't, isn't that good enough? I'm making my reports for who's paid or not paid, right? Well, this way, I think then you can directly have it maybe and then report she, she's our district as much okay but okay. can the same thing happen as our our secretary says she does not want to go in and do the the shared okay. document so that she puts a receipt in my box i put it on that sheet okay. it's the same thing i'd have to do with this take it out of my box and put it on this it's the same thing or not I mean, right like if we didn't set it up as this tracking our payment if we have right. our own you don't have to, way to track you don't, have to track. Like right. don't, don't have to use track. that piece of it right you don't have to i'm all i'm saying is that if you want to you know, let's say you want to penalize a student because they owe you something to prevent them from scheduling you know if you say must have a zero balance in order to schedule last drive somehow you've got to tell the ledger this student doesn't owe you anything or you know or yeah you don't have to use it but you can, and it's usually what we're trying to do is make it as seamless as possible. Because when parents can pay by credit card, I know it's kind of a headache, especially when you're dealing with school districts. It just makes things so much easier because it can be done 24 seven anytime that you want. But it you some people use it as much or as little. Like I sometimes have parent or driving schools who don't let their kids use the scheduler they want it they put all their drive times in but they hand schedule the student it takes them about a year before they go can i let the student schedule <laughs> and then i go yeah i've been waiting for that so yeah it you can use as much as you want but the the clients that we have that really use the most of this system are the happiest all right so um, and I think we were talking about having packages where you can have prerequisites. So if you have a set of skills, what are you talking about? Yeah, like if you got somebody towards the end that's freeway and reviewing all kinds of things versus somebody that's a first time driver. Right. You try to dog them and that person's got to turn around and they haven't driven anywhere. With you. Yeah. So like levels or whatever. So I don't have, there. I don't have that <laughs> scenario set up in here because I was working on using Summit as my, my dummy data. But this is a package that has prerequisites. And you can see that I set up three services, online classroom, behind the wheel, and road test. And that until final attendance is taken on the online, they can't do any BTW. And until final attendance is taken on by BTW, they can't do a road test. So it would be the same kind of scenario that we can set up for you that they have to do so this type of drive. Can't do rural. Right. Can't do highways or Yes, you can you can set we can set that up so that they have to do them in order. Um, and that just comes from us learning how you do business and or you know how you want it to run, but it is possible you just kind of think outside of the box. Every person that registers on the site will get an automatic welcome letter when they register that can reiterate all the terms that are relevant for a parent who wants to take or a student who wants to take driver's ed and it goes into their transcripts. So when, because this is dummy data, I don't have any transcript information in here, but everything is housed in the transcript. So this student canceled late, so it'll keep track of the registration, the terms of service, so they know whether or not they agreed that you have a, a no-show fee, a late cancellation fee, all of that is housed in there. Um, you can also attach documents. We have people that do completion certificates, 
we just programmed it so that you can actually send a custom form letter um, to all the BTW students. Okay, so you know the cost of gas has gone up exponentially. And in this software, if you go to the course, what most of our driving schools are doing now, they'll go to the behind the wheel course and click on the roster because you have every single student at your fingertip that's in behind the wheel. They can then filter by all the ones that are incomplete, select all of those students, and then say with selected, charge a fee, $15, and they're doing this because they just got this last weekend, maybe two weeks ago. And then you can say fuel surcharge, and then every driving school can add $15 to the students' ledgers that are not done yet. So it's kind of up to you. You guys may not have that scenario, but it is possible. We have people that charge extra for completion certificates when the student loses it and they need to get another one. Once these driving schools are charging a fee, they're returned back to this page where they can send the custom email that says, hey, check your transcripts or we've just added a fee to your ledger, please pay before your next drive, things like that. Anytime that we can do help you with mass communication, that's what we wanna do. When we're scheduling drive times as well, I'm gonna to go to the manage courses page. Let's go look at, I looked at the instructor, right? I've given two presentations. So when we look at this particular instructor, I just named him behind the wheel, just to keep it easy. But he'll see this and he'll be able to take attendance. And by taking attendance, all he has to do is go to his day and let's see, did he have something yesterday? I'm gonna find where, oh, let's go to the top where he hasn't taken attendance for this one period. So this is the one period that he hasn't taken attendance for. It'll always pull it right up to the top so he doesn't have to search. And taking attendance is simply, was a student absent? No. Should they be credited for 60 minutes observation and 60 minutes of performance? If so, all you have to do is hit save changes. If you want, you can put public comments for the parents and private comment for anybody else who might need to know what anything unique that happened with that particular drive. And once you hit update, that student is given credit for 60 and 60, and they know exactly what they have left to do. So any questions before I go on to the next? When we schedule drive times, we can do, I'm assuming that your instructors may schedule their own drive times, okay? If that were the case, then this instructor can schedule his own drive times by selecting the drop down. The company settings allow you to turn on and turn off certain features because some driving schools don't want their instructors to schedule. Some say, oh, heck yeah. And some want to make sure they only schedule their exclusive students. Okay, so there's a lot of flexibility. Once you want to figure out how you want to dial this in, it can be done. So I'm going to schedule some drive times in May for this particular instructor. And are you doing one or two hour time slots or three hour time slots? How many kids are you taking in the car? Three. Three kids three in the car. Hour. And this was the scenario I think we had last time. So they drive for one hour and they sit in the back seat for two, two. right? Yep. Okay. So we're going to set this scenario up and we're going to say from May 1 until 6 1, we can go out you know, further, but I'm just going to do this. This particular instructor is going to work every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And it's gonna be from four to seven. We'll start it back a little bit. Say so starting at two from two to five. And we're gonna open up registration right now. So it's available on the calendar to see. Usually I, when I'm training people, I say, give yourself a 10 minute window in case you made a mistake. And then after 10 minutes, it's available for kids to see. Um, when you are extremely busy, by the time you make a drive time, kids are already grabbing it or getting on, put on the wait list. That's why you can give yourself that window. We're gonna go every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday from May 1 to 6 1. And I don't think, I think your only pickup and drop off might be the high school, right? Okay. <laughs> well, we have driving schools that make public and pick up drop off places, you know, they meet at the churches or they meet at the mall or whatever. So this has a lot of flexibility as far as that. Once I have set this very first scenario of my drive, I want to click that button because I want to automatically return and do the next batch. So in a very quick, short order of oh, the vehicle, I was playing around. So we're going to pick another vehicle. It won't let you double book a vehicle. 
You do not have to book the vehicle if you don't want to, but it's kind of nice because if something happened to that vehicle and you go to the at a glance calendar and say, show me all where all the red car is, because I got a flat tire, you know which drives you need to fix. So, but in this case, I will put car two and I will click insert. Oh my gosh, we're not gonna, I must have clicked, I was playing around demoing so much today. So we're not gonna pick a vehicle on this one to show you that you don't have to, but then we're gonna insert that car. And then we just did 14 periods. So I did two to five. And now I wanna do the next batch because we're gonna do five to 8 p.m. All I have to do is change the two to five. Everything stays the same and I just insert. And if you were really gonna work late, you could then do eight to 11, which I don't think you'll probably do, but. No, only allows to drive six hours a day. Oh, and instructors can only drive six hours a day. Okay, well then you were done at eight. <laughs> so now all of these periods are in there for the behind the wheel. And if we look at that instructor schedule for May, okay, this is behind the wheel schedule. There's the uh, two, let's see, what was I scheduling? The two to five, and then the five to eight and the eight to 11. Okay, so they're all in there for kids to start grabbing. If by chance- So you I missed, can you, when you, were, when you were setting that up, does it say how many kids can go? Oh yeah. Three? Yep. Two, three. Okay, three. yep. And they did 120 minutes observation and 50 by the yeah. well. Yep. Okay. Yep, so if I go back to that particular page, let's go into the managed courses. And let's say that here's all of the periods. You could get to every single period. <clears throat> and my date range is going to be from May 1. Hold on a minute. Okay. So from May 1, these are all of the drives that I had booked. The ones that have the car were the ones that I had booked earlier in the previous session. So if I want to edit that particular period, where I, I guess when I was doing these, I did two hour time slots and there I specified that there was, I don't know if you can see that better, three kids. Things, yeah. yeah, so I can, I can put one, some can be private drives, two kids, three kids, as many as can fit in the car and that you wanna do the um, amount of drives so once they sign up to this, let's say three kids are driving from three to six, mm -hmm. and one of the kids has to be done by five, can you just go in and say he did not get that and change that? You have to do individual change for that kid. Well, when you take attendance, right. is that where you're going with that, yeah. Kyle? Yeah, you take attendance, he would only get 60 and 60. He wouldn't get 60 and 120. And so when you drop him off, you just click it and say he's done. But you, you, if you can, if you have internet, you can go right in there and take phone. attendance. Yeah, on your phone. Yep. I just like. You do attendance before he drives up. You're saying. Well, I don't know that you would. Or can you do it the, after he drives? You do it after he drives, okay? Because you can't take attendance before the period starts. You can leave notes because that would be cheating. You know, it's like we have to just think that if an instructor, and I'm not saying it's you guys. But let's say that an instructor took attendance for the day and then just canceled all the drives and it looked like he was really working and he wasn't. So we make sure that the period starts and then attendance can be taken. One minute, that's all you need is one minute for the period to start. Okay, good questions. So, so, uh, oh, speed, sorry. so can you set it up to where, let's say I have a group of kids like, 24 kids that I want to schedule with me only, and there's a 24 set of kids I want to schedule with this instructor. Mm -hmm. 24 kids to schedule with this instructor. Yep. Is there a way to do that where only the kids I've got? Yes. You can access me. Absolutely. So I got the best drivers because I'm the department head. I make sure I get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give Joe a little. I knew I didn't want to drive. All sitting signed up for me. I'm like, what the hell? Absolutely. Yeah, the trip as he came in the door. <laughs> <laughs> You're going with wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. So what I Yep. Well, I honor for our district anyway, they're paid. We don't do hourly, we get paid per student. Yep. Yeah, so you're the second person that told me that. A certain amount of students accessing right. me because mm -hmm. they can't go two drives with me and 
Else. Absolutely. So you can go into the manage students and I can do this very quickly here. So I find the student, I pop out the tray and I click on the schedule. Once I get here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's, oh, it looks better back there than on my screen. That, that enrollment icon right there, when I click that enrollment icon, that's where I get to say, who is the exclusive instructor? Okay, as soon as I pick that one, that kid will only see your schedule regardless of how many other drivers there are. Okay? New yep. mass set. New, not kids. mass okay. set, but I can show you how it's very, it takes just a couple of minutes to assign all the kids because you go to the course, you find the students, and then you assign them. So if you have two instructors, say for one class, and you want half the kids going yep. to one, half the kids the other, you can go through it. And yep, and assign, assign them. Each kid to the whatever instructor. Or if, can you assign both parents so that they have multiple teachers that you schedule it? Or if they could go like either one of the instructors, one right? Of the, well, then you wouldn't assign an exclusive instructor if you don't care right. who no, they no, go with. But once they selected one, do they have to? They stick with it. They have, okay, so they don't have the option to bounce no. back and forth. No, nope, but an admin can override that at right. any time. Okay. But if you, the student cannot, these are rules that the student must abide by. But you guys can do whatever you want in the system. If you are too busy, let's say uh, halfway through this kid's drive, you find out your personalities don't mesh and you want to give them to him. So you can change the exclusive instructor over to Bob. I don't or know what, what happens you if you've driven three times, but then you have the fourth day, you can't make it that day. Yep, an admin can change it. You an can admin. Change that and yeah. It. Does it? Messes up your pay. It, Leave it alone. Well, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. We, we, we used to do that all the time. Now I can't. Oh, sorry. Right. So these rules are really in place for the students to adhere to. Yes. So let's say you had three kids that were from a town that's 60 miles away or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you want them to drive together. Would you, yep. instead of doing the open stuff, would you just sign them up certain days? It just kind of depends. That, that takes a little more thought process. Like, do we do regions? You know, how do we segregate these students to say you are in the North region and these are the drive times that we're going to schedule for the North kids versus the South kids. So yes, we can micromanage it down to areas that you want. Um, it just, that's when the conversation comes out. Once somebody signs up, we go, okay, what problems are you having? How can we solve them? And here's how we do it. So okay. we can go in and manually uh, yeah. um, put students in there for their yep. time. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so when a student goes in, because they register themselves, right? They register themselves. So as soon as they register themselves, mm -hmm. there's really could be not much time to go in and say they have to drive with Jeff as opposed to can, it, right? de it depends if they owe, do they pay? Are they going to pay for anything? Because like if they did pay, you could say must have a zero balance, be able to, to schedule first drive, even if it was just a penny. And I think that's what Twila did because they didn't do a merchant account, I don't think, but they made the package one penny, which made it impossible for them to pay a penny because there was no merchant account. And so as soon as Rick saw that they had met whatever requirement, he would go in on the ledger, adjust the balance, and then they were free to schedule. And he would assign their exclusive instructor at that, that time. time. Okay. Just thinking outside the box, too, in the package management, we can set up another service, another course that says instructor assignment, make that a prerequisite before their, their first class period. So and and when you say class action. period, you mean drive. Drive right. period. Right. Yeah. Yep. Habit, class period, classroom. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so that's that is possible as well. Yeah, well. One other question. So this is kind of a different question. Can can the kids all electronically sign that they've done the requirements and teachers electronically sign as well? On the software? Not yet. That's what we're working on in in development. So what they what you can do is yes, you can take attendance. Just the signature part is what's being developed. So. No. But there, uh, there are completion reports. I don't yes. Know. Right. Uh, so we have to have the kids sign each time they drive. Oh, okay. Each time they drive, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That was a pause. <laughs> <laughs> it's a state. It was Audra that told us that. Well, we have them sign after they take the road test. No, Audra said after every drive. Do you do that? 
No. So because like we have this little card, and then after we're done, protest and sign the name saying that we protest. But we don't do it after every drive. Well, that's how we used to do it. But she said, yeah. hmm. I mean, yes, we I guess do. We'll have to ask our drive. <laughs> wait, hold. Do you have well, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you have a sign every drive? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, that's the way it should be. I agree. Very, 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 very to that. But right. that's. I've yeah, never. I know. Because I question yeah. like five times. <laughs> Are you <laughs> pulling it out, you guys? Book. I don't know where in this fifty-page book it is, but I'm gonna find it. Come on. All right. So let's see. Where did we leave off? Um. Got a little bit. It's just these three. Everybody else. Yeah. Is so basically, what one of my questions is. I mean, the kids have to have classroom, uh, uh, their classroom time. You can finish that. They have to have an will, They have to take a road test. And we keep track of all this on paper for them, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have to put it into the state management system that yeah. the yeah. Yeah. developed. Mm -hmm. um, can we do all that on the software? Like, and not the state stuff, but can we do all the other? Can we keep track of it and we have one form for everything? Yeah, right it, the only problem is they can't sign. Potentially, yes. So, like we have, so in the state of Massachusetts, the RMB, which is the DMB, I don't know what you guys call it here, is they have modules. So when they are done with classroom, they finish their 17 modules and attendance is taken. The driving schools in Massachusetts export that and import it into the Atlas system at the RMB. So if there is some way to communicate with whatever data we can get out of here that can help you import into your system great we'd love to know it because then that'll make your life easier there in louisiana every time that something is done we have state forms that can pre-fill and they can print off and be signed in wisconsin we have the mb 3001 form that is pre-filled they need that to get their permit after classroom and it is you know we have some driving schools that already have their signature on them and then they just print them and you can send that MB3001 form into the student's transcripts where they can download it as they need it. So there's so many things that the software can do. I just need to understand more how or what you need. How about at the very end, is a printer report showing every day they drove? Oh, yeah. Like at the very end? Absolutely. Yes. So that would be, for instance, maybe in the student history. And because this is a demo, may not have really good stuff but if i went to the student history okay if we had put notes there you can print this off it, it'll print it in eight and a half by 11. it shows everything that the student did every drive if they did classroom two would be in here if that's what we sold them as a package and any comments when you see the lessons here that would be like in a scenario for massachusetts where they have specific lessons that you can implement in there and when you take attendance, they did lesson one, two, and three on their first drive, three, four, and five on their second drive. And it'll actually show everything that's covered if you have a specific lesson plan for your behind the wheel. Can you, uh, I, I guess you can modify how these kids have the time of parent teaching. Oh, yeah. That's, that that's so exactly that like. Everything that they've done. Yep. Go through that. Yep. And then, many states do a parent class, like Louisiana does one. And we create a service called PC and we actually schedule one. Um, I can actually, one of my driving schools in, in Minnesota, they do an awesome job. I'm just going to go to their registration page. Parent class is required if at least 40 hours, 40 hours if you uh, take a parent class, you have to do, drive with your student. If you don't do a parent class, you have to do 50 hours with your kids, all right? So if a parent doesn't want to do a full 50 with their students, when they go to register, I'll show you here. So we're going to go to the registration page. We'll just pick Hutchinson because I think, I think we can pick anyone, Buffalo. All right, so we're going to pick the comprehensive package. So here you can see that he's got behind the wheel. There's this student would be signing up for 2022 behind the wheel. He specifies there's a late a $50 late cancellation fee. You can see that. Um, then they do classroom. So he lists all their classroom and they're super busy. They're booked out. You know, he's got the whole year in there a lot. But when we get down to the classroom, now this person, this parent is potentially going to sign up for a parent class, which makes them accountable they have to go to the parent class whether that's on zoom or in person the software will send them two text message reminders to show up for the parent class 
he can then take attendance, you know, that the parent actually showed up and you've got that accountability in their history. So it just kind of depends on how you want to set that package up. Do you want a service that includes parent class, classroom, behind the wheel, road test? We can do it. There you go. All right, so how much time have we got? I think we got three minutes, right? Am I supposed yeah. to go to 350? Yeah. So we got a little bit of a late start, but um, so what's what's your impression overall? I like it. Good. I, I like the fact that you can do it in a specific area. So like you said, in our district, we don't, like, we get paid by the students. So we're mm -hmm. driving the students for the whole thing. To yeah. The end for testing. So we're, you know, it, it was where they could just sign up here, there, there. They might sign up for road one with us, road two with another, and that would work. Yeah. It's like kind of what you think. Other districts, it's hourly. Right. Ours is twice. So the fact that we can do it by, okay, you 24 students go to sign up. Here's his schedule. Here's my, you know, I yep. think that's great. Yeah, no, good, good. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that works for you. There's there's a lot in the software that it does, but it's really hard to kind of cover it all in like 40 well, minutes. See, like, we wouldn't have to use the classroom because no. we're one of the few districts that still teach the classroom during the school day. Yeah. It's a class. Yep, and I know. Most have to teach before school or after school. We teach it during class day, so that wouldn't even affect us. Our kids just part of right. the schedule. So, yeah, so when... We when, have to worry about the driving part. When Ryan was looking at, you know... We did a demo with him. He went to the website. I, mean, I think he did it almost a year ago. Um, but he went to the website and he did a, a test drive for him. Test drive is basically what we did here, probably with a little less, you know, a little more structured, <laughs> you know, but um, filled that out. And then once he decided that, that was what he wanted to do, he went to the sign up page and filled out the PO. Because if that's how your school system works, you need that PO. We've got it all ready for you guys there. Click so do, the Utah. Do, do you have to do it by district or can a school, like if this Northridge I want to do it, not being no. a school district? Obviously, I have to get permission from my district. Yeah, no, that's fine. And But you can do individual schools, not the whole district. Exactly. Yep. You know, obviously. Do you get a discount for schools or? No, it's, it's, it's we like to keep it simple. It is $6.25 per student registration. For as long as they're in the system, as many drives, they'll get all the text message reminders. So it really doesn't matter. Right, exactly. So what I do is um, for all of our driving schools to say this is April, come May 1st, I will send them a bill for whatever happened in April. Yep. One time flat fee. And if you want to, if you pass that on to the parent. What, what is that? that? Six dollars and twenty-five no, cents so per student, student registration fee. Should come out of your reimbursable cost too. Well, and I think I could reimburse. Yeah, you could. Yeah, it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, I'm still trying to give me a side by side for my reimbursement. Yeah. But see, right now, all of our money goes towards the car. We haven't allocated any for anything else. So if we want to go this route, that's a different. Yep. All right. Well, I think. We had a, at least the technology work today, so I'm happy for that. All right. That's great. Any other questions? You can see me at my booth. Otherwise, we are on a plane tomorrow back to cold, chilly Wisconsin. Oh.